My summer fling turns out to be a father. I woke up in a stranger's bed. Great, it was only my first night in Powell, and I've already slept with some. Way to go, Miguel. I recalled the previous night all too well and made the conscious decision of coming home with a man named Liam. Since mom was busy that night, I thought of grabbing a drink or two at the bar by the beach. But after spending some time with my thoughts alone, a buff man approached me and took the seat next to me. He introduced himself as Liam, and immediately we hit it off, since we shared a lot of common interests. I did not think much of it at first, since he seemed like just a friendly guy to all. However, as we got deeper into the night, I found myself gravitating towards his touch more and more. Soon as more drinks started to pour and the party was getting louder, I was leaning towards his muscular body as he strokes my hair gently. Want to get out of here? He whispered, and that was all it took. Don't get me wrong, I very much relished our night together. I had only been with one other man in my life, but already I felt much more comfortable with Liam. He was incredibly attentive to my needs and made sure to be gentle, but as I lay in his bed the morning after, I was starting to regret my actions. I was in the small town of Powell to visit my mother. After all, since it was such a close-knit community, I was bound to bump into Liam. Thinking the best way to attack the situation was through avoidance, I suddenly slipped out of Liam's warm bed and headed out as he still sounded asleep. The following day, I headed to my mother's shop bright and early. I took the previous day off, reasoning that I needed time to adjust to power. Before mom ran a pretty successful surf shop, and for the summer I decided to work there to earn some extra cash. I walked into the shop, Powell Surfers, mindlessly. Clearly I did not know what was coming for me. The moment I walked in I spotted some familiar curls. I could not mistake those for anything else, because just the night before I had my fingers coming through them in bed. Liam spotted me, a smirk etched on his face. Knew you'd be back, he teased smugly. I rolled my eyes and gave him a little shove. What are you doing here? I asked, annoyed that I had to face again who I thought would just be a damn good one-night stand. He laughed at my irritation. Whoa there, Prince, he said. I work here. My eyes widened upon hearing this, and he must have detected my thoughts because his face lit up as soon as seeing my misery. Oh, you're the new guy, huh? He smirked. So you slipped out of my bed only to end up working with me. I sighed. Yeah, whatever. Don't tease me, I replied. He chuckled once again, and I could not help but be attracted to his gorgeous dimples and bright smile. Okay, Miguel, I got you, Liam winked. Liam then proceeded to show me around the shop and relayed the instructions that his boss had left for me. Little did he know that his boss was my mother, Shania. I did not bother telling him, as I did not want any special treatment, because I was the boss's son. I was assigned to check the deliveries and inventories for the shop. My mom had only been in the small town of Powell for over a year, with her new boyfriend, and already she had managed to make her business bloom and Powell Surfers just happened to be one of her many victorious ventures. Throughout the day, Liam was kind enough to check my progress and guided me whenever I had confusion regarding my tasks. Surprisingly, I found him a very easygoing man despite his buff and intimidating exterior. I was even more shocked to find that during my short afternoon break, he had left me a cinnamon roll and a mango shake on my table. He even wrote a note which read, Told you on the first night, Powell is a small town, that there's no escaping me. Friends? L. I could not help but smile. I suppose we could be friends, and we did not have much of a choice seeing as we were basically stuck in the store together all day long. Mom just had a couple of other employees working around the block, but it was mostly me and Liam since he was the manager of the shop. Succumbing to his offer, I ate the scrumptious treats in the storeroom where I worked and decided to look for him after. He was behind the counter in the main room, arranging some displays. Thank you, I said shyly. He flashed me a genuine smile. Sure, Miguel, don't run away from me anymore, alright? He poked before letting out another chuckle. He must have noticed my discomfort, so he grabbed my arm gently and stopped me from turning around and headed to the back. Hey, look, I'm kidding, okay? I'll stop. I just had had a really fun time with you that night, and I'm sad that you left. Those jokes are just my way to cope, he admitted. I'm sorry. I felt a sense of relief hearing that. I'm sorry too, you know, for leaving without saying goodbye. I had a fun time too, but it's just that I hate awkward morning afters, I confessed. He smiled and was seemingly more relaxed this time around. It's all good, Em. So we good? I nodded, and that night, and every night after, we went home together. This is a party Powell style. Come on, Liam encouraged me as we approached the bench house packed with people in their swimsuits. We had just finished yet another shift, and he invited me to this party thrown by one of his friends. I relented. We had been hard at work all week, and unwinding did sound like a good idea. Liam swiftly introduced me to some of his friends before we grabbed cocktails and just drank them as we overlooked the beach. 
The party was a blast. There was a tiki bar and lots of Hawaii-inspired decor that really amped up the beach party vibes. Soon, I found myself loosening up and drowning more cocktails. Shania was a little rough on you today, huh? Leon observed. He still did not know that Shania was my mom, and seeing as she and I were not affectionate to one another, and that I only call her by her first name, Liam still had not caught on. Yeah, it's fine. I downplayed it. At least you're there to make work bearable. Liam raised his eyebrow, probably gauging if it was flirting. We had been towing the line all week, and I felt like I'd been hinting that I really enjoyed his company, but I still not given a clear indication. Likewise, Miguel, he replied. In fact, I've been enjoying your company too much. I can't believe I still want you, even after you practically flee from my bed that morning. You want me? I repeated in disbelief. At this point, our bodies were very close to one another, and I was staring at his expressive blue eyes with much intensity. He sighed. Cat is out of the bag. I do, okay? I know we vowed to be friends, but I can't help it. I love watching you bop your favorite songs while you work. I love how clumsy you are when you eat your nacho. I cut him off with a kiss, and it deepened into a full-on makeout session. At that point, I did not even care that we were in a room filled with strangers. It was just Liam and me. Whoa, Liam exclaimed. Was that? Like you too, I mumbled. I spent the past few weeks fighting it, but I think the alcohol has given me the courage I needed to say it out loud. Upon hearing that, he leaned in for another passionate kiss, and soon I found my fingers entangled in his soft locks. We then grabbed another round of drinks and then moved further away from the party and towards the beachfront. We sat and watched the sunset together with drinks in hand. Despite the blaring speakers and the fun behind us, I still found peace with just Liam by the beach. I leaned my head towards his tough body and I took in the moment. Drink in hand, gorgeous Powell sunset, and this beautiful man beside me. I can get used to this, I muttered softly as I ran my hands up and down his hard abs. He laughed and then placed a kiss on my forehead. So can I. And you really better get used to it, because I'm not going anywhere. The next day, I came to work with a spring in my step. The previous night was a blast, and today was even more perfect, as Liam invited me to grab breakfast before we headed to work. We were holding hands by the beach, but as soon as Powell's surface came into sight, we instinctively dropped our intertwined hands. We were unsure of how Shania would take it. Furthermore, Liam did not even know that our relationship would not even have a problem because she was our boss, but also because she was my mother. It turned out that we need not hide because awaiting us was a very enraged Shania. Her gaze was just enough to figure out that she knew about what was going down between me and Liam. She raised her eyebrows, likely awaiting an explanation. Liam remained oblivious and simply greeted her. Care to explain this? She hurled, showing me and Liam a picture of us dancing together from the night before. She scrolled up more photos of us, looking cozy by the beach appeared. Imagine my horror when I received a message from an unknown number informing me that my son is not only gay, but is also pursuing a relationship with one of my trusted employees. Liam's eyes widened as he finally realized that Shania was my mother. Shania, please let me explain. This is not Liam's fault. I tried to justify it. Liam, I'm so sorry. No, Miguel. I won't let you take the fall for this. We both wanted it, and I'll own up to it, Liam reasoned, placing his hand over mine as a form of reassurance. Despite the revelation, evidently shocking him, he remained composed and kind towards me. Oh, please save it. From now on, you two stay far away from each other. Do you understand? Shania ordered. And you, Miguel, I'll have a long talk with your father. There's no way he raised you a gay son. Ma'am, please. Miguel did nothing wrong. I was the one who pursued him first. Please don't blame him. Liam tried to defend me. Look, Liam, I've known you for a while now. I know that you're a reasonable man and that you were likely just manipulated by my son. Anyway, this is just one of his rebellious phases, so forgive him and forget this whole pathetic excuse of a romance happened. Shania boomed. I was hurt deeply knowing my mother was very much against my sexuality. But what hurt me more is that she already painted me as the villain of this story, despite the fact that I was her son. I'm sorry, Mom. I've done nothing but disappoint you. I'm sorry that this is who I am, I said before walking out of the shop. I wandered around the town, skipping my shift altogether. It was not until late in the afternoon, when I was sitting alone by the beach, that a familiar silhouette approached me. It was Liam. Hey, I've been looking everywhere for you, he said. Finally. I flashed him a weak smile, and he did not reciprocate, When he gave me a bear hug. Hey, you okay? Wait, that's a stupid question. Of course you aren't. But I'm here now, Em, he reassured. I turned towards him and I touched his face gently. I pressed a gentle kiss on his lip, in disbelief at the kindness of this man. How are you not even angry with me? I didn't even tell you about my mom, I said. I understand why you didn't. Shania can be really tough to deal with, as seen from what had, had transpired earlier. 
I'm still here, okay? He told me. I wanted to cry tears of joy, incredibly grateful that he remained so supportive despite my mom's chaotic comments earlier. How's Shania? I asked. She'll come around, trust me, Lion soothed me. She's just shocked about your sexuality, of course. She's your mom, Miguel. She might not know how to approach you or be close to you, but she loves you. I leaned towards him, and speaking, and just taking in his muscular scent. I was so thankful that he was there, comforting me with encouraging words and softly stroking my hair. With him by my side, I knew it could overcome whatever was coming. I dreaded going home that night, so I stayed out with Liam as late as possible. Unfortunately, when I entered Shania's home, she was there at the kitchen table, as though waiting for me. You're home late, she announced. Look, if you want to scold me, go ahead, so I can go to bed after. It's been a long day, I prefaced. Son, I know I haven't been the most hands-on with you since your father and I got divorced, but please try to understand me. I was in shock to find out you're gay, she replied. No shit, judging from the way you immediately tried to disown me, I'm guessing you weren't too happy about it either, I told her frankly. She closed her eyes and approached me. She then sat me down at the kitchen table where she started talking. I won't disown you and I apologize for the way I reacted. It wasn't my best moment, but I was genuinely upset at myself and I projected it towards you. Upset? How? I questioned. My own son is gay and I didn't even know. It was a slap to my face, as though I've been a neglectful mother. I'm sorry, Miguel, she said. Why the change of mind? I asked. I talked to Liam, actually. He told me how much he enjoys your company and what a blast you two have had. The other employees, China and Karina, also gave their insights. They said you two really clicked, Shania mentioned. I want you to be happy, Miguel. Then let me. Liam makes me happy, Mom. For the first time in a while, I saw her smile. I love when you call me that. It's like the old times. So sorry, son. Allow me to be a better mom to you. That night, Mom and I talked about her life at Powell over ice cream. I also told her about my blooming romance with Liam, and detailed how I planned to come out to my dad. For the first time in a while, I genuinely felt my mother's support, and I could not be any happier. After I had come out to my mom and she approved of my relationship with Liam, life at Powell Surfers became a blast. Mom was there to supervise more often, and she would bring the employee snacks and even help out on the operations, although she had other businesses to manage. Our co-workers were also very supportive of our budding romance. That day as I was counting the number of souvenir keychains on the rack, someone tapped my shoulder. It was Liam and he was carrying a fresh bouquet of pink roses. Here's to a week of dating, he announced. I was over the moon. No one had bothered making as much of an effort for me as he was. Thank you, I said, just as I was about to lean in for a kiss. I heard a cough from behind us. It was a lady with raven black hair and slit-like eyes. Liam, is that you? Oh dear, who would have thought I could find you here, she said, sounding surprised. Uh, Eva, what are you doing here? Liam questioned as he looked back and forth between me and the woman, evidently worried. Yes, may we help you, miss? I offered kindly. Oh yes, I was just here to inform the father of my child to fulfill his duties and reply to the plenty of messages I have sent him. Your son needs you, Liam, pleaded the woman named Eva. I was perplexed. Liam had no son. How could this be? But judging from the worried look etched on his face and his immediate need to explain to me, my hunches were confirmed. Please, Miguel, let me explain, begged Liam. Oh dear, you didn't know that the man you were dating was a father? What a pity. It seems like the common trait of Liam anyway, running away without any explanation and escaping from his responsibilities. He's avoiding responsibility with our child, and look, now he's avoiding answering to you, Eva revealed. My heart was thumping so wildly in my chest. I knew that his past week was too good to be true. It was the calm before the storm, and this commotion was like a typhoon. I did not know if I could survive. I'll leave the two of you to it, Liam. For goodness sake, visit your son, said Eva, before she walked out of the shop. As soon as she was out of sight, Liam gently grabbed my arm and pleaded with me. He was tearing up clearly guilty of omitting the very important detail that he was a father to Eva's son. Please, Miguel, allow me to explain. I hesitated at first, but then I remembered all the times that Liam had extended his patience and understanding towards me. Although what went down was immediately disappointing, I felt like I had at least to hear his side, so I allowed him to explain his past relationship with Eva. Apparently, prior to meeting me, he was quite a wild partygoer and slept his way through towns. Eva was one of his regular sexual partners, last year in a neighboring town. When he still lived there and recently, they met again and she claimed that he got her pregnant. She said that she has been trying to reach out to me throughout her pregnancy, but to no avail. Recently, she has allowed me to meet Benjamin. I'm trying to co-parent, but Eva's just difficult, 
Liam explained. So you're a dad, I said, and sighed. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you earlier. I'm planning to. It's just that things just have started being okay again since your mom found out, and I was waiting for the right time to tell you. I'm sorry, Em. He apologized sincerely. Oh well, I guess I just have to learn how to deal with babies if I'm going to be around Benjamin a lot, right? I asked, signifying my support for him, being a father, and co-parenting with Eva. Liam cracked a wide smile and leaned in for a kiss. Wanna play with Benjamin later today? It turned out that Liam bringing me to Eva's place to meet Benjamin was one of the worst ideas ever, in retrospect. Even while it's on the way there, Liam and I were already receiving dirty looks that we had not previously gotten. I suppose it was because despite Powell having mostly friendly people, there were still a few bigots here and there. When we arrived at Eva's apartment, we were met with a glare from a couple just outside her door. Are you Miguel? The tall and scrawly man asked me. I nodded, perplexed. Well, stay the hell away from Liam, Eva and Benjamin. Let them be a family, exclaimed the woman with them before they stormed off. Just then the door opened and now came Eva. How dare you bring your little tramp here, Eva confronted Liam. Look Eva, I'm trying my best for Benjamin's sake, okay? If we will make this work, Miguel will be around him a lot. It's best for them to meet, Liam reasoned. Eva simply rolled her eyes. My son is not meeting you or your gay lover. Get out. The whole town knows about you too, and how neglectful of a father you've been. Good luck out there, she threatened before slamming the door in our faces. True enough, as Liam and I were dining later that day at our usual spot in the known cafe called Quartz, we were getting even more nasty looks. The owner who was typically very jolly was a little deadbeat that day and barely talked to us. I texted China and asked what the hell Eva has done, and turns out she's been spreading lies about me on social media. Liam sighed. She's pathetic. How can she expect you to co-parent peacefully with her when she's like this? I asked. Liam then flashed me his phone, which showed me the slander that Eva had been putting up. No wonder people perceived Liam badly and even scorned our new relationship. Eva claimed that Liam chose me over her and her son, which was a total lie, of course. Thankfully, work was our sanctuary. Our co-workers, China and Karina, were ever supportive and understood Liam's perspective. When he tried to reason what went down with Eva and their son, however, there were not many visitors to Powell Surfers that day and I guess it was safe to assume that a lot of the townspeople really believed Eva's lies. Enough to purposely avoid me and Liam. If only I knew that the worst was yet to come. Later that night, Liam and I decided to unwind at our favorite bar. It was a rough day and we could really use a drink or two, so we headed out to the hole in the wall bar. We swiftly ordered and settled at a small corner table, just wanting some time to ourselves. Liam was rubbing my hand back and forth, a habit he had developed whenever he wanted to comfort me. Not long after we were seated, the owner of the bar saw us and approached us. Blanche was usually quite friendly toward us, especially since he and Liam had been friends for a long time. But this time around, she looked furious, and sure enough, she kicked us out without a second thought. How dare you show your face around here, Liam? Here I was thinking that you have been a responsible father to Eva's son. But look at you, neglecting your son for this trashy gay piece of shit, she confronted him. I gasped, not expecting Blanche to be capable of such an attack. What the hell's wrong with you, Blanche? I know Eva's your cousin, but Miguel does not deserve your crude remarks, shouted Liam. Get out, both of you, retorted Blanche. I won't tolerate your ways, Liam. You've been a deadbeat father, and you, Miguel, be ashamed of yourself, you home-wrecking gay slut. Liam wanted to fight for me, but I stopped him before we could say another word. It was Blanche's bar after all, and we were already at a disadvantage. However, just as we were about to head out, a man who was at the table in front approached the scene. How dare you talk to your customers that way? They don't deserve that, the mystery man said. Sir, you don't know what these people are capable of. They hurt my cousin, Blanche reasoned. You're right, I may not know what they have done, but I know what you've done, and I certainly won't support you and your business anymore. Not after I've witnessed the owner discriminating against their customers, the man said, before he walked out. Without a second thought, Liam and I followed him so we could thank him for standing up for us. We found him smoking just outside the bar and thanked him profusely. It's all good, and I'm Greg, by the way. Nice to meet you both. Although the circumstances were atrocious. I didn't really hear what you guys were arguing about, but as soon as I heard the slurs, I couldn't help but say something, the man replied. Well, Blanche was angry on behalf of her cousin, who also happens to be my baby mama, Liam explained. Greg's eyebrow shot up and he looked confused. Cousin? Which cousin? Eva, you know her? Dude, no way. She was my ex-girlfriend, and I'm actually here to see my son, who lives with her, Greg revealed. He's only a few months old. No fucking way, you're also with her. Is your son Benjamin? I asked. Greg confirmed that he was indeed his son, and that when I realized that Eva might have lied all along. Clearly, Liam thought the same as he was shocked, and was trying to process what he had just heard. I then explained to Greg what had happened and how Eva had been trying to get Liam to co-parent with her. 
Liam also mentioned how Eva had been slandering him and his relationship with me on social media, painting him out to be the villain, and essentially allowing the whole town to ostracize us. Thankfully, Greg was a level-headed man who was understanding about the situation. Instead of making a big deal about Liam's past relationship with Eva and the possibility that either of them could be Benjamin's father, he offered to help them three make a DNA test to confirm the bloodline. I'm seeing Ava tonight anyway, Greg said. Find a way to get a hair from Benj. The next few days were rough. Since Ava's post had spread, Liam and I were practically friendless in Powell, with the exception of Greg, China, and Karina. My mom too, who did her best to assist us and even helped speed up the release of the DNA test results by paying the lab technician off. When the results were finally out, I held Liam's hand the whole time as a form of support. Sure enough, Greg was confirmed to be Benjamin's father, which made him elated as he said that he had always wanted to be a dad, although he wished that his baby mama was not as problematic as Eva. On the flip side, Liam was relieved. Although he had learned to love Benjamin, and he would have still fulfilled his full responsibilities towards him, he was admittedly not ready for fatherhood. You're fine, baby, I confronted him. He then placed his forehead against mine and kissed the tip of my nose. Thank you for being there for me, unconditionally, he expressed. I gave his hand a squeeze and reassured him that it would always be there for him. Meanwhile, Greg proposed that we came with him when he finally confronted Ava. After all, Liam had to clear his name and feel the satisfaction when Ava realizes that her lies have been exposed. Greg also called the police, since he requested he would get full custody of Benjamin after all the stunts Ava had pulled. We followed him and the police to Ava's crib, and to our utmost horror, Ava answered the door looking rough. Her normally elegant curls were all over the place, and her eyeliner was smudged. Her eyes were also suspiciously red, and clearly she was not herself. What on earth are you doing, Ava? asked Greg. Come back another time, Greg, not now, said Ava as she tried to close the door. Thankfully, Greg managed to stop her, and he forcefully entered, and out came the police revealing their presence and entering their home after quickly reading the charges that Greg intended to file against Eva. When the police entered, they discovered bags of cocaine strewn across the floor while young Benjamin was in his crib, crying his eyes out. Greg managed to calm him down, but unexpectedly, the police also ended up arresting Ava for drug possession. Liam and I were beyond shocked. We expected to go back and forth against Ava, but this was a stark contrast to how I envisioned the interaction to be. You two have ruined everything, Ava shouted at us as the police were handcuffing her. I can't believe you, bitch ass, Miguel is still here. It wasn't enough that I sent those anonymous text messages to your mom outing you and exposing you and Liam, huh? No, Eva, you have ruined everything, I replied calmly. I can't believe you stooped that low, even as far as going to my mom. But you know what? Thank you. Because of you, my mom and I are closer than ever. Two gay sluts ruining the peace and quiet here at Powell. You're the ones who should be arrested, you disease carriers, she retorted. We have done nothing but love, and guess what? You're the one who's getting rightfully arrested, Liam replied before Ava was finally whisked away by the police. Hand in hand, Liam and I watched as Ava was led to the police car. He squeezed my hand and I turned to look at him. He flashed me a weak smile that almost says, everything will be all right. I squeezed his hand right back, and with him by my side, I knew that there were no tough waters I should not overcome. Conclusion the Summer soon came to an end. Ava was sentenced to five years of imprisonment due to her possession and usage of illegal drugs. Meanwhile, Greg was awarded full custody of him and Ava's child, Benjamin. Greg also decided to settle down in Powell. Thankfully, shortly after Ava's arrest, the truth about the whole ordeal came out. Thanks to our co-workers, China and Karina, releasing an even more viral set of posts that cleared my name and the most especially cleared Liam's. As a result, we received plenty of apologies from people who initially thought that Liam had abandoned the son because of me. However, Blanche stood her ground and continued supporting her cousin, Eva, despite her arrest. Consequently, many of the townspeople frowned upon her support towards her cousin and started boycotting her bar until eventually closed down due to the low income. A stark contrast is Powell Surfers, which is ever thriving. Mom is even thinking of expanding the business into carrying more brands and varieties. She is also extremely supportive of my relationship with Liam and even cooks for us once a week. As for me, I have decided to permanently move to Powell. Not just because Liam had asked me to move in with him, but because I genuinely relished the small town. I have also decided to help my mom with her business ventures more and learn a thing or two about her business ideas. Who would have ever thought that my supposed summer fling would be the love of my life? The end. Do baby mamas have the right to dictate who their baby daddies date? Leave a comment and let us know what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our rainbow force and stay wholesome.